Now UAV has taken the Python world by storm when it comes to package and project management. And we did some videos in the past on using UAV on this channel and you can find them in the top comment of the video. In this video, as promised a few months ago, we're going to look at using UAV in a Django project. So we're going to use UAV to manage the dependencies and also the virtual environment in the project. So UV, as it says here, is an extremely fast Python package and project manager and it's written in Rust. And it's been growing rapidly and you can see on GitHub it's now got 37,500 stars. So it's growing very fast. And I'm going to reference a couple of times in the video this guide from SAS Pegasus. So I'll leave a link to that below the video. This is an excellent breakdown on UV and an overview of what it offers. And SAS Pegasus itself is a brilliant site for learning more about Django in the context of web applications. And we might do some videos on that in the near future. Here's an example of one of the UV commands. UV sync can potentially replace all of these commands for managing Python itself, as well as dependencies and virtual environments. So let's get started and look at UV and Django. Just before we do though, if you want to support the channel, check out the coffee page we've got in the description. Now you're going to need to have UV installed to follow along. So there's an installation section on the UV documentation. And I would recommend setting it up using the curl command here. And this is going to use the standalone installer for UV. So it's not going to actually be dependent on Python itself being installed. And you can actually use UV to manage Python versions. And you can check out the introduction video that should be appearing on the screen now for more on installing UV and using it to manage these Python versions. Now we can initialize a new project using the UV init command. Now what I'm going to do is go to VS Code where I have an empty directory open. And if we run the UV init command, we're going to initialize a project. Now before we do that, I'm going to show a handy tip. If you want to update UV after you've installed it, you can run the UV self update command. That's going to check for updates and it's going to install them if they exist. We don't have any to install, so we can now initialize the project using UV init. And we can give it a name. For example, I'm going to call this Django project. And one cool thing we can do is specify the Python version we want to use with the dash dash Python option. And I'm going to select version 3.12. So that initializes this project directory. And we're not going to need the hello.py file, so I'm going to delete that. And it adds some useful files here. For example, a git ignore file. So some useful stuff in here for Python applications. We have a Python version. That's a very simple file that pins the project to a particular version of Python. And importantly, a pyproject.toml file. And again, the previous video should shed some light on this, but we have this, for example, an empty dependencies array. This is where when we add dependencies by default, they're going to be put into that array. And we'll see the ability to add different groups of dependencies towards the end of the video. Now what I'm going to do to start with, because this is going to be a Django application, is I'm going to go back to the terminal here and we're going to run the uv add command. And let me just make sure actually that I'm in the right directory here. So we're going to run uv add and this should be done inside the project directory. So you can cd into that if you need to. And let's install Django and also Django extensions. Now when we run this command, what it's going to do to start with is download Python 3.12. And that's because we specified that that was the version of Python we want to use. So UV can then grab that from a repository, download it, and then use that as the Python version for this particular project. And it also installs the packages such as Django and Django extensions and any dependencies of those packages. And notice as well, as it's installing, it adds those dependencies to the array in the pyproject.toml file. So this kind of replaces your requirements.txt file in a normal Python application or Django application. So now Django is installed and we can use UV to manage the virtual environment. When you run the UV add command, it creates the .venv directory. And this is where your virtual environment exists. And anytime you run a UV command, it's going to use this by default if it finds that directory at the location where you're running the UV commands. Notice all of the dependencies have been placed into the lib site packages directory. So what we can now do is clear the terminal and we can now start a Django project here by running the UV run command. And then we can specify Django admin, which is a command line utility for Django. And we're going to run the start project command. And let's just call this my project for this video. And we want to place that into the current directory. So we used UV run here, and that's going to use the virtual environment that's been created. And it's going to have those dependencies available, including Django admin on the command line. Now again, notice that's added a directory here called my project, which contains the typical files for a Django project, such as settings.py, urls.py and also asgi and wisgi.py. And as well as that, if we go back to the top directory, it's added the manage.py file. And that's the standard way to run Django management commands inside a project. So normally you would run commands such as python manage.py run server. So I'm going to try that just now. But of course, when we run that, it couldn't import Django. So all we need to do in order to use UV for a Django project is basically replace Python with the UV run command. Anytime we're running a management command, you can do that. 
So for example, UV run manage.py run server. That's going to start the Django development server. And if we go to localhost 8000, we can now see the installation page for Django. So if we go back to VS Code, let's say we have this project and we want to create a Django application within the project. What we can do is run the UV run command and instead of manage.py run server, we can run the start app command. And let's create an application, let's say for a notifications section of our web application. So we'll create an application called notifications and that's going to create that directory on the left hand side alongside all of the typical files such as models.py, tests.py and so on. Now we're not going to build anything complicated here, but let's just go to settings.py and we're going to go to the installed apps section. So what we can do is add a couple of installed apps here. So we've got this Django extensions package installed and we also have our own notifications app now. We can add them to installed apps and let's go to models.py. And what I'm going to do here is add a very simple notification model to this application. It just contains a single field and that's the message. Now the purpose of this is to show how we can actually interact with the database. So again, uv run manage.py and then we can run the make migrations command. That's going to create a migration file and I do need to save settings.py so that this is picked up in installed apps. When we run make migrations, it will create that migration file and then we can run the migrate command. And what that's going to do is actually make the changes to the database and it's going to create the database for the first time when you run the command for the first time. So if we look at the left hand side, we have now a db.sql lite and that's the local database for this project. So again, if we look at the commands in this UV Django project, instead of python manage.py migrate, we just run uv run manage.py migrate. So we're just replacing python with the uv run command. So that's the simple workflow and if we want to run the Django extensions shell plus command we can just do that using uv run as well and it's going to load the Django extensions shell. So let's now cover a couple of slightly more advanced features. Let's say you want to add development dependencies to the project and these are things you might use during development but they're not actually crucial for the deployed web application in production or in staging. Now examples of this might include packages like PyTest for testing your application. It could include formatting and linting tools like Rough, Black and iSort. And it could also include static type checkers like MyPy. None of these are actually crucial for the running of your application. They're just used for development purposes, for cleaning up the code, for writing tests and writing static type checking. So let's now add a development dependency using UV. So we can run UV add and then we can pass dash dash dev to that. And let's say we wanted to install black as a development dependency. That's going to install that alongside the black dependencies. And if we go to pyproject.toml, that creates the dependency group section. And we have a dev group here with black specified. We can then use black by running the uv run command. So what I'm going to do is go to this models.py file that we have. And let's add some badly formatted code. So I'm going to write a dunder string method here. And that takes self as an argument. And on the same line, we're going to return self.message. So that's not really Pythonic. You want to break the body of the function into new lines. What we can do is clear the terminal and we're going to run the uv run command. And then we'll use black and it's going to be notifications models.py. And this should hopefully clean up this file using the black formatter. And you can see that it's done that. And we now have the body of the function on a new line. So as you can see, black is a development dependency. We don't need black in production because it's only used to format code. So anytime you need this development dependency, you can add the dash dash dev flag to the uv add command. Now what happens when you want to deploy this site to an environment where you don't need to be developing? So in those environments, you don't need black to be installed. So how do you install the dependencies for the project? But exclude the development dependencies. So basically, if you want to ignore the development dependencies, what you can do is you can pass a flag to the uv sync command. So I'm going to clear the terminal and what I'm going to do here is delete the virtual environment directory containing all of the dependencies. Now once that's gone, what you can do is run the uv sync command in order to install everything and get that virtual environment set up from the dependencies that are in the pyproject.toml file. But by default, this is going to install all of the default dependencies and also the dev dependencies. So if you want to exclude the development dependencies, you can pass the dash dash no dev flag. And then when we run that, it's going to install all of the normal dependencies, but it's not going to install black, as you can see here. So that's what you can use when you're actually deploying the site and it's going to an environment where you're not going to develop. Simply pass dash dash no dev and it's going to exclude those dependencies. And that will also work if you're running this stuff inside a Docker container. Now I want to move on to one final aspect of this and that's dependency groups. Now you can see when we passed the dash dash dev, it added the dev dependency group, but you can actually add a number of these groups. 
So for example, in a Django application, we might have specific functionality that we want to expose, and that might be functionality to export data to an Excel file, and you might need some Excel Python dependencies in order to do that, or it might not be something that's used by all versions of your application. Something like that would have a dependency group for the Excel dependencies. Now, one thing we might want to do is add dependencies for production only. So what I'm gonna do on the terminal is execute the uv add command and this time we're going to pass the dash dash group option and we'll create a group called production or prod for short and let's say we wanted to use uvicorn and that's going to be our server so that's a server we only need in production because when we are in development we can use the django run server command and we also might want to deploy our, our server static files using white noise so we can add white noise to that production group as well now let's execute this command and it very rapidly installs those packages. And in pyproject.toml, we now have a prod dependency group containing uvicorn and white noise. Now, if we go back to the SAS Pegasus article and go to the advanced usage section, there are some useful tips here that the author has found. And one of them is working with dev and production requirements. You can see the example here where we create a group called production and we install gunicorn or gunicorn, however it's pronounced, into that production group. Now, if we go down here, there's some useful tips in this article, so I'll leave a link to this below the video. Here's an example of adding Django debug toolbar to the development dependencies. And if you want to install packages in different dependency groups, you have some flags that you can pass to the UV sync command. Now, we already saw the no dev flag, that's going to exclude development dependencies. But we also have the option to pass a specific group where we want to install all of those dependencies. And we can also pass no group as well. So if we want to exclude a particular group, you can pass that in as well. Now, if we go back to our own pyproject.toml file, let's say we're building for production. So I'm again going to delete the virtual environment directory on the left-hand side. And when we build for production, we want these prod dependencies. And we also want the dependencies in this default array at the top. So what we can do is go to the terminal here. Let me clear this out. And we can run the uv sync command and we're going to pass dash dash no group and we're going to pass dev to that. You can also use the dash dash no dev option that we saw a second ago. And then we can pass an explicit group to add here and that's going to be prod. So this is going to install the prod dependencies and it's also going to install these default dependencies but it is not going to install the dev group and you can pass any number of groups to these. Now if we install this, let's see what happens. So you can see it's resolving the packages and it's installed some of these. We have uvicorn and white noise at the bottom. And these were from the production group that we added and the rest of them are dependencies from the default group so we have django django extensions and all of their sub dependencies and this means that when you deploy the django app to production settings you can use uvicorn or potentially gunicorn instead of the manage.py run server command and that's going to be more production ready now i want to finish the video with one small tip for your own productivity and that's setting an alias for the uv run command so you might notice that whenever we run a manage.py script, such as make migrations, we have to specify UV run. So what you can do instead of specifying UV run every time is use the alias command if you're running on Linux or Mac. And the syntax for that would be to use the alias command and we can set up an alias such as UVR and set that to UV run. And you might need to encapsulate that in quotes there, just like that. So then anytime you want to run the UV run command, you can instead just use UVR. And you could take that even further, so uv run manage.py, you can specify that. And then when you want to run a manage.py script, all you need to do is uvr or potentially uvm. Now I'm on PowerShell unfortunately, so that's not going to work. But if you're using a Mac or Linux, any kind of terminal on there, that should work for you. Now these small tips and using aliases can seem like nothing, but if you're running these commands potentially hundreds of times a day, this can really save you time and effort over the long run. So it's a small productivity or optimization tip. And if you're using UV in a Django project, these might be able to help you save some time. And I use similar aliases for Git, for example, using this Z shell Git plugin. If we scroll down here, we can see some of the aliases that that gives you. For example, G for Git itself. GA is an alias for the Git add command. And there are actually loads of these. If I scroll down, one of my favorite ones is the GGP command. And I've finally found that command here. So ggp is an alias for git push origin and then whatever the current branch you're on is. Commands like this can really help you save time. I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten the name of the branch I'm on. And you then have to run the git branch command, find out the name of the branch and then type git push origin branch name. This can save you a lot of time. You just type ggp, you don't need to look anything up. And it's going to push your current commits to the remote repository. So that's a small detour, but these kind of aliases, if you're interested in a video on this type of stuff, 
and these optimizations that you can make to your workflow, let me know in the comments. And there are other areas we could dive into here, for example, usage with Docker. And I did a similar video on Docker UV with FastAPI, and that link should be in the top comment. There's also a section in the SAS Pegasus article on using UV with Docker. So again, you can reference this article, which I'll leave a link to as well. And this is a really great guide to getting started with UV and also covering some advanced features and workflows. And with that, thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, check out the coffee page that we have in the description and the top comment. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.